My name is Janetta Dobson. Today I would like to share with you a little bit about the seventh grade math course, Fundamentals of Math. This course is a transition between the elementary math and the secondary math concepts that they have learned and will be learning. This book is not a work text like all the prior math courses have been. It is a textbook. Right here, you can see on this page, I hope, that this section right here those problems are too close together for them to solve in the book. They will have to use notebook paper. I've used notebook paper turned sideways to help them line up their numbers if they're not used to writing them out, writing out the problems, or even graph paper. So the focus of this course is on solidifying all of those elementary math concepts that they've learned so that they don't have to concentrate on those when they move into the secondary math courses of the future. They will go over basic operations, review those, review order of operations, things like comparing, rounding, and estimating. And then they extend all of those concepts from whole numbers to decimals, fractions, and rational numbers. Students will review number theory concepts like factoring, divisibility, primes, greatest common factors, least common multiples, and number patterns. They review percentages and measurements. With percentages, they review um, tax percentages. You go to the grocery store you, or the clothing store or whatever. You don't just pay the price on the shelf for that item that's listed. You have to pay tax. So you have to figure out how much that is and how much tip to leave if you go to a restaurant. Good skills to learn. Once they learn those things, they are introduced to um, secondary geometry, where they take the concepts they've learned in elementary school and extend them to give them a good foundation for the high school geometry course that will come. It then introduces integers, positive and negative numbers, and algebraic concepts, including what are relations and what are functions. The final chapter of this book would cover introductory logic and set theory. All of these concepts presented in the last few chapters form the basis for all of the other secondary math courses that your student will be taking in the future. Every lesson teaches a review of what they should know from previous knowledge, other years, and then extends that concept to move the student towards secondary math. After the concept is taught or reviewed, the student is asked to complete a skill check question to demonstrate that they understand that concept. The homework is divided into three sections, A, B, and C. Then there's also a dominion modeling and a cumulative review questions. A questions are super similar to the examples in the lesson. So if the example was three times five, the example would be five times eight. Okay, something very similar. Uh, B makes them think a little bit more. C questions would say something like maybe three times what is 15? And they'd have to work backwards to get, oh, that would be five. The Dominion modeling questions are problems taken from real life so that they can see how this applies to their life and jobs that they might want to do in the future. There are also about 10 cumulative review questions taken from previous lessons. And after each lesson question or sec piece group of questions, there's a review section number so they know where to refer back to should they need that if they can't remember how to do that problem. In every chapter, there are special features and I want to show you a few of them. One of them is the math and scripture section. The math and scripture section takes, shows where math is actually in the Bible, and there's questions to go with that. Another section in here that I really like is the math in use, and it highlights a Bible character, an inventor, discoverer, or innovator, and their contribution to the field of math or science. This one's on Fanny Farmer, and she's got a very interesting biography, and it's really kind of fun to read and 
show the kids her cookbook and what she did to standardize the cooking process. Another one we have in here is our problem solving section. And in our problem solving section, oh, in our problem solving section, the, ch the students are actually taught, how do I think through this problem? How do I go about solving it, setting up? And we go through basic steps on how to do this and it's taught fully in here. And then every lesson has a mind over math question. Nope, that's not my mind over math. Here's mind over math down here. They have a mind over math question. This is just a fun question that uses math and it makes them think. And a lot of times I would use that as a, an extra credit problem from some of the students so that they might feel like they're doing something a little more challenging but getting credit for that. Um, it, the course also has a teacher edition. This is the first book of it. There's two books. The teacher edition has fantastic helps in it. The answers to all the problems are listed right in the student text in red. There, the solutions are extended off to the side in the margins. There are motivational ideas down at the bottom. Yep, here's a motivational idea here. This is the motivational idea. Helps you think of other ways to extend this concept with the student. There's also a feature that I enjoy, um, the common student errors. Not that I enjoy that they make errors. I enjoy that they tell me what students commonly do when they mess up on this section. That way, as a teacher, I know what to focus on and how to teach my student not to make that error. There is so much material in this course, but it is a very basic foundational course for all of the other math that comes in secondary education. So I hope you enjoy using it as much as I have enjoyed teaching it over the years. So have a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye.